Peru. <laughs> Did you do that? Hello and welcome. I'm Karsten Spencer and this is Flash Forum and I'm thrilled because we were able to get uh, Patricia Keel to stay for part two of the interview that you watched last week. So we've already decided we, you know, during the break we came up with a number of exciting things to talk about. Uh, number one, I want to just take a moment to share with everyone some exciting news, which I was so excited to have Patricia here last year. I really didn't give it the the due that it deserves but I this past week uh, signed contracts and have now become the spiritual leader of unity of Ukiah and thank you and if you don't know uh, about Ukiah and uh, unity I really invite you to go to my website uh, by the time you watch this I will have a whole special section set up that will talk about the unity movement and uh, my new little Gorgeous little it's church such up a in Ukiah. Great little church. It's a very cute church. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, uh, and I'll be sharing more about that in weeks to come. We've got a lot of stuff going on up there. And anyone that's in the Bay Area that would like, we're going to try to at least once a month uh, arrange a little carpool or a little road trip to go up there. It's a beautiful community. There's a hot springs right nearby. One of the biggest Buddhist centers in the world is right there with an absolutely delicious. Yes. Have you been to the restaurant there at the no, Buddhist Center? No, I haven't. It's the a thou Thousand Buddhas. It's a, oh, beautiful. a really beautiful center. So, uh, But right now, because uh, we've got so much to talk about, I want to get right to Patricia Keel. I think today we're going to talk about Kundalini energy. We're going to talk about mothers and daughters. And I'd also like to share some about uh, John of God, share that with Patricia, and how wow. similar this all these divine energies that are now present on the planet uh, they're there for us. And well, how and we I see in your, your intro, you know, it's it's enlightening entertainment and it's for the new age. And I think that's something that people really need to, to grok, that this is a new age. We are literally, it's it, in, they call it a yuga, and it's 26,000 year cycles. And we have just turned into this new yuga, which is a golden age. It's not, it's a new age, it's the golden age. And it happened at 1221. It happened this past December. And when many, many people thought the mind calendar meant the end of something, it's the end of the age. And we're coming into this new age where the energies that are coming through are so incredibly accelerated. And as you say, Cardi, it's coming from many different directions, bringing us into a new level of consciousness that, that humanity is being called into. It's not just unity people or people who study presence or John of God. It's coming from all different directions. Yeah, and, and it's everyone. A anyone who is on the planet today, this is my understanding, anyone who's on the planet today, their soul, their divine energies, right. plan for them to be here and they are participating in it. And I think what's with the downloads that I'm really getting from, from Spirit is that the healing is over. We're in the last part of the healing, which is what the awakening process is. The, the healing's done, and you're able to step forth and be that creative being. That's why I call it enlightening entertainment for the new age, because it is about creativity. It's you know the entertainment idea for me. Yeah. I've been doing this healing work for a long time, and what I keep getting the message from spirit is this healing work is leading to a whole a whole new renaissance of mm -hmm. humanity. You know opening to their own creativity in a whole new way. Absolutely. And I, um, I'd love to hear what you have to say well, about that Well, and you know what well. I love about that is uh, part, of, part of the teachings of unity that I, I think people, people resonate with and they, they, can, they understand the concept, but they don't necessarily like the experience. And that teaching is that everything that is here for me is, is in divine order. And everything that is present in my life right now is really a gift for me. It's a blessing. So part of what's been happening for people is a lot of just stuff has been up. Even looking into past relationships that have been really painful, that haven't worked, and, and for us to be able to say and see that this is the gift, this person who really drives me nuts and crazy 
is my greatest teacher. You know, we can say this, but then to actually feel it and to experience it, not at just the level of the mental, but the full level of experiencing what's there for us. And I think that what you just said is so important because there's a lot on the planet right now. There's a lot of really what feels like very awful stuff. I mean, violence, some of the things that are happening in, in politics right now are just, they're horrendous. They're really awful. And yet, and we see how can these people, how do we reconcile with with what, what, what these people apparently are believing that we don't believe? And at the same time, what I'm really feeling is that it's coming together in a way where there's a releasing of that which isn't true. And it, there's not really anything that you and I need to do. We need to simply be holders of this feel that knows that it's all already done. It's like you say, I don't need to manipulate in any way. I need to hold the space and know that the awakening is happening right now for everybody. Yeah, I think the one of the things they talk about in the presence process is when your buttons get pushed, great. Grab that, it. That, that, <laughs> Go yeah, for it. Everything that's out there pushing your button, everything that you think you need to fix, they're there for your benefit to get you out of this story that it's got to be different and to actually experience that energy is right. moving into your body, experience the feeling. And, of course, the, the unity principle is there is only one power and one presence active in the universe and in my life, God the good, omnipotent. Wow, and I think if we talk about those six needs you talked about last week, if that is really true and we can get that, those needs melt away. There's nothing that we need to worry about. You know, there is this divine energy that, that we are a part of that's, that's flowing through us. And yeah. of course, you know, many of us are still in that place where something comes up and it's like, how could this possibly be good? It's not up to us to figure out how it's good. It's up to us to sur then surrender to the faith and say, okay, this is good. Yeah. I may not understand it completely, but this is good. And if this is good, maybe the feeling that's coming up around it is good too. Yeah, well, and maybe it's not, maybe it doesn't feel good. That's the part where I had a real challenge as a unity minister because part of the teaching that I, as, a w as I understood it was, this thing that I might see as not good has no power over me. And I thought, okay, so I can just say, it has no power, I'm feeling really awful, I'm feeling really angry, but that feeling of anger has no power over me. But what I've learned is, that feeling of anger actually has a ton of power over <laughs> me. <laughs> and if I'm only willing to say it doesn't have any power and try to put it over there, it's gonna build, it's gonna build a little mound of its power over there. Because I'm going to find another situation where somebody yeah. else is going to trigger that it's little... It's not going away. Yeah. It doesn't go away. So what I need to do is I need to say, who, curious, what is that? Let me feel it more. Let me let that, instead of walking away from the person who's driving me crazy, pushing my buttons, the husband that I thought I could fix but I couldn't, all that energy, I'm going to be willing to be present internally. It doesn't mean I have to, you know experience their energy I need to experience what I'm experiencing yeah we need to own our own feelings and move towards the energy I mean I, I well the other yeah. thing I love about unity is that Myrtle and Charles Fillmore went straight to the teachings of Christ and yes. they believed if he can create those miracles and he said to us all this and more ye shall do he was really telling us you can do that too so we talk about the creativity that's opening up on the right. planet I think that's it. I think we're going to tune into this divine energy and begin that we re realize that we just have been taking baby steps I so far. I think you're far. totally right. Really and baby I wanna, steps. I want to share something because I kind of opened a little door on this. And I, to me, this was a really great learning experience when I was in India. One of the things they talked about was how we can move um, energetically from being somebody who, and they called him an indulging being, somebody who just reacts based on their emotions drama queens, a diva energy. You know, we all know that energy, and sometimes we go there. You we've know, been we, there, right? We've been there, gone there. We know people who go there. Reality TV is all about that sort yeah. of indulging energy. It's all about the emotions, kind of churning it up. The next thing they talk about is what they call a controlling being, and they say these are people who try to control people, places, and things. 
And boy, I when I was in India, I thought, I can totally identify with this, especially in my marriage. I was always trying to control my husband or my kids or the situation. Cardi's going like this. <laughs> he can identify. <laughs> well, it, what they shared was so powerful to me because what they said was, you think you're trying to control the other person or the situation, but what you're really trying to do is control Your the feelings, feelings yeah. that are going on inside. Yeah. And because you you can't let yourself experience them. And so you have this false belief that if you change the situation, different deck chairs on that Titanic, you're not going to sink. But all you're really doing is, again, pushing it down, pushing it down by strategizing something on the outer. So the next kind of being after that controlling being and, and we, is somebody who is conscious of that. And I think a lot of people who come into New Thought are in that camp, you know. I notice I'm controlling this person because I feel really anxious, I'm feeling abandoned, I'm fe whatever we got from therapy or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that to me is a really, a really big awareness in the spiritual journey. Yeah, I, th I think awareness is the key and awareness does not feel good because we've spent many years trying to avoid these parts of ourselves or these feelings yeah. and to me that's what the codependency is. Codependency I think is the, probably the number one dis-ease on the planet and it's this idea that if I can go in there and fix you and make you do this and do what would be all these things for you then somehow you're going to come around and fix me. So it's this unspoken bargain where rather than owning <laughs> our own stuff we're trying to go in and fix someone else's stuff so in it just even when you say it out loud you see how it's ludicrous how it sounds. It and yet, you know, probably all of us have fallen into that because that's what we're taught from our parents. You know, that's the. Be a good girl. Yeah. Show up this way. Be right. Exa and then you're going to be loved. If you do this, then you're going to get loved and accepted. Yeah. And what, what they want you to do is basically deny who you really are and very much deny the feeling self. You know, yeah. if I'm angry, be angry. Which brings me to another point of, I think, some of the new age misconceptions is that we need to avoid feeling bad because that's going to continue to project bad things into our future. And for me, and the presence process is great about this, it teaches you that you need to feel the feelings but detach them from the story. Because I, no right, right, right. Right. I have feelings that come up and as soon as I feel fear or feel an anxiety, I project it onto, oh my God, do I have enough clients this month? Am I going to be able to pay my rent? I project it onto this thing and then go out and start, start fixing. Because if, if I don't, I think I'm projecting lack into my life. And it's based on what I'm really doing. It's just not being willing to fear a, feel a fear that is down there. Because right. the fear is not lack. I've decided that's what it means. Right. Does that make sense? Well, and also, you know, is it a chicken or an egg thing? In other words, the, the I don't have enough clients. You look, and you, you look at your book and you go, oh, there are a lot of empty spaces in here. And that triggers the fear. Or is, does the fear come up and then you build, you, you know, it's kind of a chicken and an egg thing. But, but what happens with the awakening experience is you look at your book, oh, there's a lot of space there, period. There's no, there's no connection between what you see. What you see is just what you see. Oh. And then the choice can come up, oh, I can make some phone calls. Or, oh, I can go to the beach, or, right. you know, whatever it might be. But there's no, the, the attachment is gone because the self is gone. It's the self that's created that connection with the fear around survival. Secu Again, it's that right. basic need right there. So I want everyone just to take a moment to breathe into what Patricia just said. Because if you're like me, not quite being that awakened being yet, it was kind of revolutionary. It's okay. I mean, it's an interesting concept <laughs> to it's be a able concept. to look, but but it's not. But see, when you said yeah. it, and I could feel it with you sitting here, it's not just a concept. And it's truthfully, concept having ha having been to those awakened states, there have been times when I've done that. When I've seen it, I mean, I've had maybe you know at one point like a ten day period, basically the first time I did the presence process where I was there. Things would show up in life, things in relationship, you know, all my old buttons that used to just stand out. And it's like, huh. No buttons. How about that? <laughs> yeah. You got the easy button, right? Right, right. <laughs> like that button to bring Patricia back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's really true. Yeah. It's kind of interesting when you have the, the actual permanent shift uh -huh. 
um, which I had when I was in India, there was nothing in my head. Literally, it just all of a sudden was completely empty. Yeah. And and I found this some part I don't know what part it was kind of it, almost like looking around inside the top of my head. It was kind of like Where did it was go? somebody really cut <laughs> off the top of my head. It was like. Is there anything in there? You know, is is there a thought to be found in there? Is there an idea in there? And it was like, I don't, I can't find anything. Yeah. It was yeah. really, really. Yeah. No, I had a, I had a couple <laughs> of days like that back, and it was after a huge, emotional release. I mean, the the the, the presence process really it's specific tools designed to allow you to go into the feeling and allow it to come up. And I think I told you, I just, I, I, I coined a new, a new emotion called crafting, yeah. which was basically crying yeah. and laughing at the same time, which was so deep and so, it was almost like my whole body was having an orgasm. It was just, I felt so alive. And I think partly that's what Christ was talking about when he, when he said, I came to bring life and to, to bring it more abundantly. abundantly. It's the experience he didn't say is always going to feel good because when you're in that feeling center, we judge these emotions. There, you know, jealousy. Does that necessarily feel good? It's interesting. When I was an actor, we cherish those emotions. It's like, oh, I'm feeling so jealous now. What does this feel like? You know. And as an actor, because the judgment's yeah. gone, you love the feeling of jealousy or Absolutely. anger or resentment. So just because the time is going so quick, and we promised we would talk about. The Kundalini stuff. Oh, can we okay. can we move into that? A little yeah, bit? I just um, I, I can't remember how we started talking. I guess you were talking about the feeling nature in the in the third chakra, the, the, the solar plexus, yeah. and how when we begin to feel it comes up. Yeah. And I was also talking about the coming down. energy coming yeah. down. Right. Well, in 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 the teachings in oneness, how they uh, talk about this, and they actually it's very interesting because they identify the chakras in a little different way. They identify the third chakra, which you're talking about, solar plexus. Plexus more, mm -hmm. as, as a navel thing. Okay. And it, I don't know yeah. why. It's just a different way of, of seeing the energies coming up. But one of the things that, that I've understood from being a oneness trainer and being in India is that the experience of oneness, the giving of a oneness blessing or a diksha, where, and you're initiated to do this, where you put your hands on the top of someone's head, what that is all about, right there. Yeah. <laughs> What that is all about is raising your kundalini. So it's activating the subtle body energies. And they're over, over. I felt that one. They're over 72,000 nadis in the body, these little channels that go up. They come and they connect at these wheels, which we know is the chakras. And what happens is, as the energy starts moving up and the diksha starts bringing it up, it begins to clear the energies of each of the chakras. So people have intense experiences, like you're saying. The intention of this raising of the kundalini is to bring the kundalini all the way up to the crown. And ultimately, with the awakening experience, when someone becomes fully awakened, it goes back down over the top and makes a complete circle. And it just keeps going. And are we needing? Do we need to stop? Are we okay? We're okay. Yeah. Okay. We're okay. We've got about six. I five just minutes. wanted to just share. For many people, when this first begins to happen, and this was my experience completely, the kundalini energy was so intense, and it would move through the body, and it would s really start shaking the body. And we do these great meditations. You remember the Ananda Mandala, where you're yes. doing the breath of fire, and yeah. you're breathing an accelerated breath in and out through the nose at each of the chakras. What what uh, began happening for me, and then it would happen in groups, was once once the energy meets the heart space, they, they've they said it doesn't go down again. So the energy comes up and then it com can come down, and you can literally feel it when you're doing these meditations. It'll come up and it'll go down, it'll settle in the in the belly area and then it'll go down. But once it comes up to the heart, and settles at the heart, which is the Christ energy, it never goes back down again. It's never going to start settle back down lower. It's going to stay there or move up. So what I found happening is in these events we would do, the Ananda Mandala, people, we'd start focusing on the heart chakra and people would start laughing. There would be this incredible sense of love and joy. 
that would happen and people would just start laughing and then it keeps going up it'll move up then into the throat chakra and that's a place where for a lot of people there's a lot of stuck energy yeah. a lot of stuck yeah. energy a lot of people get will find when they're doing these meditations that their body starts racking back and forth because there's a lot of stuck energy in the throat and that was a big experience for me where my, literally I would be moving in my chair because the energy was so strong then it'll come up to the third eye right between the eyebrows and you know that can be a headache kind of experience for people and then it comes up to the crown um, my personal experience was before I had the full shift in awakening the kundalini energy would move in my body and the outer body would move once I had the awakening experience on 12 12 12 there was this this kind of almost like my friend called it a flat line all of a sudden that energy that had been really strong and really intense totally settled it was an inner experience in the body and so now that's that's my experience I don't have that kind of because it's I guess it's just cleared its way out completely so people may find as they're going through this awakening process that things start shifting in terms of how that kundalini energy is clearing in the different chakras and again is it this is the heart this is the Jesus Christ energy this is the the Muslim this is Mohammed okay. this is Buddha this is the awakened energy of, of the seeing the mindfulness and this is the Hindu this is this is the the opening of, in the crown which is the full awakening experience so you may find it settling in one of those areas as it moves up into your full awakening experience yeah. Wow, well that's it. And I think what's exciting and I, what, what I want everyone to get is that this is, it's built into our DNA. Oh yeah. This is what we're, this is where we're headed, what we're meant to happen. This is happening one way or another. You can't stop it, you can't fight it. The ego mind is gonna fight and scream <laughs> anyway, but it's happening. And what I loved was when you talked about the, uh, the solar plexus or that, uh, that feeling yeah. chakra in the belly button. I mean, that's where we're connected to our mother. That's the energy that continues us moving forward. So ancestral it makes connection. sense to, uh, ancestral connection, to honor this feeling center because that's where the force that continues the species moving forward. So it would make sense that that's where it starts. And it's ultimately rising up to draw in the God force or the father energy. So there's this beautiful synchronicity yeah, and I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> that just connects us with the entire planet so I want to let everybody know that Patricia is we talked about it a little bit on the last show but she's planned at Mount Madonna in the this, Santa Cruz mountains in the Santa Cruz mountains this amazing uh, women's retreat and I'm just going to turn it over to you it's, and let um, you share yeah, about it yeah great it's going to be Mother's Day weekend which is going to be Friday night Saturday and Sunday the weekend of the uh, 18th 19th and 20th of May and people can fly into San Jose if you're in other parts of the world or if you're in the Bay Area, you can drive down there. It's, I'm going to be co-teaching it with Elizabeth Sherwenka. She and I are both oneness trainers. It's going to be healing the divine feminine through that energy of mother and daughter. So if you're, if you're a woman, you're a daughter. You may also be a mother. You don't need to bring your mother or your daughter. Just come by yourself. If you can bring a mother or daughter, that's very beautiful. We're going to have amazing healing experiences. And this is a beautiful retreat center for us to have that center, Mount Madonna, the Madonna, Mother's Day weekend. So come and join us. Onenessprogram.com. That's my website. Uh, and do you have anything else coming up in, the, in, in this area? I have an area? awakening course coming up the weekend of the 20th. And where's and that going to be? That's going to be in San Rafael. Uh, or San and Selma, I'm not sure. We're looking at the two different spaces. And a lot of uh, San Francisco, the 14th, will this be aired by then? Sa Probably. Sunday Maybe. night, the 14th, at Project Arto. We're doing it's a oneness meditation. It's the 14th meditation. of April, right? 14th of April, Sunday night, uh, oneness meditation is happening. And the Expo, San Francisco Expo. We have a oneness booth all weekend long. Oh, wonderful. At the I'll Expo. Have to show up. Yeah. And you can come give Diksha, receive wonderful. Diksha. And we're doing a oneness meditation Saturday night, the 23rd, I think that's. The, no, the 20, I think it's the 27th. It's okay. the 27th, 7 right. o'clock at the San Francisco uh, New Living Expo. Wonderful. So that's going to be awesome. Lots Wonderful. of good things happening. And Thanks, so give you, give your website one more time because the, the, these Oneness shows will re-air. Oneness Also, you can listen to my radio program, 
onenessprogram.com. 24 hours a day, runs a radio show. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much, Cardi. You're so w- yeah, it's so to welcome, be really wonderful to be here. Yeah. And uh, thank you all for watching. Once again, you can connect with Patricia Keel online. I really invite you uh, to check it out. Do you do some, some uh, live? Uh, I do live ohms. It's yes, I do live ohms. Live ohms. So you can experience this just sitting in front of your computer. If you go to her website and they, they just just follow it, find out where you can just experience this divine grace that is flowing through her, that is flowing to us. And uh, the live ohms are very powerful. You can sit in the comfort of your own home in your pajamas or totally yes. naked and <laughs> take it all in. So thank you all for watching. Thank and you, uh, we didn't get to really talking about John of God, but we'll do that next week. All right, lots of love and uh, light and love always. We didn't talk about John of God, too bad. I want to hear it. It's almost easier to have somebody, if you're talking about it, you know, to. Have someone interview me, yeah. You should have somebody interview you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I keep, people keep saying, you need to have somebody interview you for your radio program. And I'm like, okay, one of these days. Well, thanks. That was fun. Yeah. Pretty easy to do, you know, when you just feel connected with somebody. Yeah. It's easy to do. Yeah.